How to load weight plates optimally in polynomial time. In street lifting, the loading of weight plates is an important problem because the athlete is in direct contact with them. At least he should be at all times, otherwise this can happen. There are many ways to load up a target weight. Some weight selections are better than others though. To begin with, let's define the dimensions of the weight plates we will be working with. I will denote plates with P, their weight with W, their diameter with D, and their thickness with T. Let's start with the minimal number of plates problem. Here we want to find the smallest subsets of plates where the weights sum up to the target weight. This is one of the most important problems to solve, because the more plates we use, the more chaotic the setup becomes. Our algorithm has the input of the weights of the plates and the target weight. The output should be k-min if there exists a subset of the plates whose weights sum up to t, and infinity otherwise. We initialize our algorithm with the values, and the recurrence relation. Claim. The desired output of our algorithm will be correctly represented by the tth element of the nth row, we will prove by induction. Our initialization was correct, because the target weight of zero can be achieved by the empty set, which has zero elements. Positive target weights cannot be achieved using a subset of the first zero elements. Our induction hypothesis, up to i, for all j between zero and t, the algorithm, outputs the minimal size of the subsets of the first i elements that sum up to j and infinity if there is no such subset. Then for the inductive step, if we don't use the i plus first plate, then the problem is reduced to dpij. If we use it, the reduction goes to dpij minus wi plus 1. The minimum of these values determines the correct decision, exactly as it is in the recurrence relation. This algorithm works only for integer inputs though, but we can approximate weights by rational numbers. Scales usually measure up to two digits of precision, so that will do it for us. We can make integers out of the rational numbers if we multiply by the least common multiple of the denominators, and then we can run the algorithm with these integers as input. Converting weights into simplified fractions has two steps. First is the conversion to a fraction. The second is the simplification by a factor of the greatest common divisor of the numerator and the denominator. Both of these actions take constant time with respect to input size. Secondly, the calculation of least common multiples can be brought back to the calculation of greatest common divisors. Multiplication by the least common multiple also takes constant time. Finally, running the algorithm with the new input takes ordo n times t dash time. But t dash is just a constant multiple of t, and t changes linearly with n. Let's solve the second part of our problem. For that, we once again fill out a dp table, but this time with the family of the subsets that are solutions to the corresponding subproblem. We initialize by the family of empty set for s min 0, 0, and by empty family for s min 0, j. Then, we fill out the s min dp table according to the values of the previous dp table. Moving on, we address the minimal total thickness problem. We aim to find the subsets of plates that sum up to t and also have the smallest total thickness. Total thickness of weight plates is the main factor determining the athlete's ability to properly grab them with his feet. We have the same input as before but with the addition of weight plate thicknesses. The same algorithm will work with the mere exception of adding the ith plate's thickness instead of counting it. We can also use a similar proof, this time with subset total thicknesses. We can solve the second part of the problem similarly, as well. We initialize with the same families of subsets, and once again, we refresh them if we've found subsets with lower total thickness. So far, we've looked at problems where the output was a family of subsets, 
but not all permutations of those subsets are equally comfortable for the athlete. An asymmetric loading can cause imbalances in the execution of the lift. We also don't want plates with smaller diameter in between plates with larger diameters. In an arrangement, consecutive plates are touching each other. Let's define the asymmetry as the distance between the geometric center and the center of mass of the weight plates. The geometric center is simply the half sum of thicknesses. In the calculation of the center of mass, I've used the leftmost part of the first plate in the arrangement as a reference point. After those definitions, we can finally state the problem. In all its generality, this problem is NP-hard, because the partition problem can be reduced to it, which is a known NP-complete problem. Let's define competition standardness with the following three properties. These properties together ensure that in the output of the minimal number of plates problem, all subsets will have a bounded amount of the weight plates that are not the heaviest. Let's consider the standard set of calibrated plates. In this case, we can set an upper bound of 13 for the number of non-25 kg plates in all minimal size subsets. Actually, we can set an even stronger bound of 8 because not all these weights can appear in a minimal size subset. Strong competition standardness requires infinitely many of the densest plates and for them to have the same thickness. We can set the same upper bound in case of subsets with minimal total thickness. And that's because any set of the rogue calibrated KG steel plates with infinitely many 25s is strongly competition standard too. The next problem deals with the uniformity of the diameters. Roughness is the measure of harm caused by a slipping foot. Slipping of a foot is more probable when plates next to each other have a larger difference in their diameters, and if the outer plate has a smaller diameter. We want the outer plates to have a small thickness, so that in case of a slip we can regain the control over the weights faster. I have to admit, this is not as exact of a definition as the definition of asymmetry was, where we calculated the moment arm of the weight, but I think this function captures that certain harm quite well. This problem in general is NP-hard too. So far, we've considered problems that are related to the athlete's comfort, namely the comfort of having a strong contact with the weight plates. In a competition setting, we have to consider further factors though. We want to ensure a fast loading time to maximize the number of athletes per heat. One factor of fast weight plate loading is how much time does it take for the athlete to attach the plates to his belt. The less aligned the plate's holes are, the more time it takes. We define the D alignment of two plates based on this. D is a positive number, mostly the thickness of the pointing finger. Next, the D misalignment of an arrangement is the number of not aligned pairs of consecutive plates. This is the number of plates that have to be lifted. The alignment doesn't change with the lifting of weight plates, because previously aligned plates can be lifted together. We can define minimal D misalignment as usual, the minimum of D misalignment values among allowed arrangements. Finally, we address the minimal dissimilarity problem. Here, we seek to minimize the dissimilarity between different arrangements of plates. This is the other factor influencing the loading time. How many plates do the spotters have to change? Let's define the dissimilarity function. Extend the definition for multiple consecutive arrangements. The first question arising corresponding to this problem is how do we choose the arrangements so that the total number of actions needed is minimal and what that value is equal to. Athletes have to give their next attempt before the next round of attempts start. Athletes do their attempts in ascending order by the weights. So we set AI equal to the possible set of arrangements 
corresponding to the target weight of the ith athlete in the round. The second question we can ask is how do we choose the arrangements so that the maximum of the dissimilarities of the consecutive arrangements is minimal? This is an important question to ask because how smoothly a competition runs will be primarily determined by the least smooth parts of it. We can calculate the dissimilarity between two arrangements by dp. We initialize by the following values and define the recurrence relation as such. Claim. The else element of the Kate row correctly represents the dissimilarity between the two arrangements. Once again, we prove by induction. We've initialized the algorithm correctly because the dissimilarity of two empty arrangements is zero. The dissimilarity of an empty arrangement and an arrangement containing i elements is i. We have to delete all the elements. Our induction hypothesis dpij, dpi plus 1j and dpij plus 1 all correctly represent the dissimilarity of the corresponding sub-arrangements. As for the inductive step, if the i plus first element of the first arrangement is the same as the j plus first element of the second arrangement, then the problem reduces to dpij since no further action is needed. Deletion of the last element brings back the problem to dpij plus 1. Adding the last element of the second list brings back the problem to dpi plus 1j. The correct decision is determined by the minimum of these two values. One way to put all these algorithms together is to first run the minimal number of plates, or the total thickness algorithm, depending on our set of weight plates. Then, calculate the minimal asymmetry for all these subsets. As a third step, return all arrangements of these subsets that have the lowest minimal asymmetry. Next, calculate the roughness of all these arrangements. Return those that have the lowest value. Calculate the misalignment of each of these arrangements. Return those with the lowest misalignment. In a competition setting, we can go further by doing this process for all of the target weights. As a final step, we choose an arrangement for each of the target weights such that the dissimilarity is minimal. Another sensible way to put these together is, once again, start with the minimal total thickness, but now this time switch the order of minimal asymmetry and minimal roughness. This could be the favorable order in case of muscle-ups, where the weight is small, so asymmetry matters less, but roughness matters more because of the larger extent of leg movement during the exercise. We could also combine the misalignment and the dissimilarity into one loading time function. We could determine C1 by measuring the time it takes to pull the daisy chain through a consecutive pair of misaligned plate holes. C2 is just the average time it takes for the loaders to change one plate. The linear combination of these two functions would be a good model for the total loading time. Why do I bother with this? Can't we just use the power lifting algorithm, which runs in ordo n squared time, well, that algorithm at best gives one solution to the minimal number of plates problem. Arranging the plates in descending order by their weights, as the algorithm deletes them from the remaining set of weight plates, could be a highly suboptimal arrangement. It is easy for the spotters to see the necessary weight plate changing actions though. 